What's going on guys? Spoopy here with the car guys. Um, also, shout out to Super Games for this video going up. Also, um, I'm here today because I want to talk to people about um, a meta call that I've uh, been testing for about a couple weeks now. And um, I'm going to profile it here for you. Um, it's been discussion around the bigger players in our community um, here in Atlanta and a couple other people. And I thought of this idea a long time ago. And I've um, actually been able to play it, and it plays us very well. Um, Shadal's best matchup is Burning Abyss uh, with the new card of Danko Seka, obviously. And I'm going to get into that. And then um, I'll play a tech that um, that helps with the Cliffort matchup because Cliffords are a very hard matchup. They're like almost an auto lose unless you, you know, pull off a couple of really um, devastating plays. So. Um, so yeah, my deck is built is really geared towards the main two decks, um, and that is instant fusion. Um, a lot of people ask me, instant fusion, what is that? Well, I mean, it, it does a lot of things for me. It helps get out uh, dweller quicker. Um, you can bring out uh, your window, and then you can go net chariot beast, which I'll show you in a minute. But um, I'm gonna go ahead and get into the deck. I hope you guys enjoy it and everything. And uh, yeah, so all right, guys. So getting into the main deck, um, I just wanted to emphasize that. Instant Fusion is probably the best card right now in this deck. So, I'm going to go ahead and get into it now. Um, play three beast. I like to draw. Drawing is very nice. Um, drawing, you know, is very nice. And be able in the mirror match to, you know, sack it off and whatnot for, um, for you know, one of your fusions and getting back your um, spell card is probably very beneficial to the mirror match. And then also, you know, being able to get this back with Falcon. Falco and then being able to draw like I said being able to just gain pluses off this is very good so I play three of those next I play double Falco um, Falco is good for multiple reasons actually um Falco is good because um, you can use it with the core and go star eater you can also use it to get back any of your fusions from the graveyard um, you can also get it with beast and start doing plays off of that and if um, the good cool part about this if you flip this and they try to negate the effect you can also El Shaddaa fusion in a way get this effect resolved and then get a fusion on the field too which is unreal so it's a really good card um, then we have two ooh, two dragon uh, th I still think dragons very viable at two right now um, especially with all the back row being used in um, in Kai Forts and in um, Burning Abyss it helps a lot when you drop Denko and then like Foolish Burial the shit all dragon and hit their back row and whatnot. Um, <clears throat> play two hedgehog. You need to play two hedgehog right now. You need to search anything you need out. Um, like getting a beast off of it is okay because you thin your deck out and then you'll be able to use it all El Shadal Fusion with it and getting a draw and whatnot off of it. So two is very good, even with Shek and Nigga. So um, then we have the, third, the last one, which is the tenth, is Squamata. Squamata just helps you get the core to the graveyard and um, whatnot. You can go ahead and. Uh, Use this with Construct, it's in your core, then you can get your El Shadal Fusion back or your Shadal Fusion back in. Um, it's very beneficial to the deck, I think. I wouldn't play more than two. I wouldn't play more than one, actually. I feel like one's plenty. Um, then we get to the non Shadal Monsters. I play uh, three of the White Dragon Weaver Burster. Um, you play so many darks that you're going to need to play three. And then I play one of the Collapse Serpent Dragon. Um, Let's see. The reason I only play one of this is because you don't play that many lights. Um, and that one comes very handy when you need to. I think it would clog it too, so I wouldn't even mess with two. <clears throat> now, the best card in the entire deck, Denko Seka. I think everybody can, every single Burning Abyss player up in the front of the store can agree that Denko Seka is the best card in the format right now. And he's shaking his head no, but he knows it's true. Um, play this, and it's a, like your opponent can activate anything. So if you, um, cool thing with this, if you have an El Shadal Fusion set and you summon this and they have nothing to respond to it, you can flip the El Shadal Fusion, they, have, they cannot respond to it, which is insane. So Denko Seka is probably one of the best like stun cards as of right now. It's amazing. Um, I recommend playing three. I wouldn't recommend playing two. I'd recommend playing three always.
Plus it's a light target. Um, also, play two mathematician. It gets any shit all in the graveyard. You can start your plays off. Uh, you can get glow bulb in the graveyard, which we'll go over that in a minute. So it's very good. Um, plus, a lot of the times when you do summon this, people need to overextend to push for more damage, and then you get the auto plus one from this card. So I think mathematician is very useful at two. Plus, you play chicken egg in the um, extra deck. So why not play two? I'll play one Raiden. Uh, I like the mill aspect, and he. Also, he's a level four tuner. Um, it's very good for certain situations where you want to go uh, like y Yazi, or you can go um, into a Scrap Dragon. It's very good. That's why I play one. Uh, then I play one Glow Bulb. We'll get into this in a minute, and I'll show you the whole thing with this. Uh, then we play one Eclipse Wyvern, one Honest. I know a lot of people aren't playing Honest right now, but being able to protect your construct, um, being able to. Um, Protect your BLS is very good. <laughs> um, and you play a lot of lights. You do play, you know, three Denko Seca, uh, three Wiver Burster, and then your Constructs upon that. And then you play the one Dad. Um, you get this a lot. Like, you search it out with this, and then you'll be able to get this out of your removal and play very easy. And it's it's a blowout half the time when you open up, like, Fusion, Denko Seca, and, like, that. It's amazing. Uh, that's it for the monster game. I believe it was like 23, I want to say, something like that. Uh, for the spells, play three fusion. It's the best spell card in the deck, other than this one right here. Um, three El Shadal fusion. I think you need to play three and three of each because Burning Abyss are so heavy right now that um, you need to get your fusion on the field as quickly as possible. You can start abusing everything. I'm going to play two MST. I'm probably going to bump this up to three, but right now it's been working fine at two. Um, just need to worry about the Cliff War matchup a little bit. Uh, then play the one Foolish Burial, one Allure of Darkness. And then uh, for the tech spell that, I'll, that I play is the Double Instant Fusion. I'll get to this in a second once I finish the last three cards on my deck and all. But um, Instant Fusion, it states that pay a thousand life points and switch summon a level six. I want to say level five. Level five. Level five or lower is Fusion Monster from your extra. So you can get Winda and you can get another card I'm going to tell you in a minute. But we'll go ahead and set this to the side. Um, and then for the traps, we play two shadow games and one core. I don't think three, I think three is too much. I think it could get very cloggy. And two seems to work perfect. And then one core, core for the starter play, and then getting back your fusion material monsters is very good. So, let me get that out of the way. <clears throat> now for the extra deck, play two windows, three construct. I think three is perfect because you do play six of the fusion spell cards. One Sheck, it's very good. Uh, play one Exiton, one Dweller, one Armory Arm. That's another card we'll talk about in a moment. Uh, one Naturia Beast, which is probably the most vital thing about this entire deck list. So I'm going to place this to the side too. Um, one Armades, one Yazi, one Scrap Dragon, one Star Eater, and then the last level 4 fusion that I play that goes along with all this is the Carbonola Warrior. Um, now we're going to get into this now. Let's see. Let's get Carbonola Warrior and all these cards. A couple, a couple reasons I play some of these cards. I'll show you now. Um, go up bulb, and then we'll get, like, say, a mathematician or whatever. <clears throat> okay. So I hope you can see all this. Let me see if you can see all this. You can. All right. Very good. All right. So with Instant Fusion, there's a lot of plays you can do with Instant Fusion that create your Cliff Fort and your Burning Abyss matchups. One million times better. All right, so we have two targets for the instant fusion, correct? Like I stated before, you can do either a Winda or you can do the Carbonola Warrior. So the benefits of playing the Winda is if you can go Winda then with the instant fusion and then synchro with the Falco, you can get your fusion back without even playing the fusion and then play the fusion. It's unreal. I've done that a couple times and it's and like helped me win the game. So synchro into Yazi and then fusion away and then go construct and burning abyss player literally cannot come back from that. And it's pretty much impossible unless they have like BLS. That's like the only out they could have. Um, so that's uh, the window. Now instant fusion is put in the deck for one main purpose and that is the Clyford matchup. Um, Clyfords are probably the worst matchup for Shadal's ever and I have to play or play my deck around game one Clyde Fort matchup so if you know you're playing Clyde Forts 
you want to go second, but I think you're forced to go first. Um, in every other matchup, I think you should go second. But Instant Fusion always brings out the Carbonola Warrior. Correct. Correct. So it's level four Earth. Okay. And you play Glow Bulb for a reason, because you can go Naturia Beast. If you can end up with a Naturia Beast on the field against Clive Force, it's very, very hard for them to get over unless they have a skill drain. And at that point, you're going to have a Naturia Beast and a Denko Sika on the field, and you are not going to lose that game, ever. It's not going to happen. It just won't happen. So, a lot of the times, I'll play the Instant Fusion, right? Getting out the Carbonola Warrior. All right, so then, after that, I will play the Mathematician, activating the effect, getting, sending the Glow Bolt to the graveyard, milling one and special summoning the Glow Bolt, and then going, synchroing these two, and going for the Naturia Beast. So having a Mathematician and a Naturia Beast out at the same time is unreal. Um, all right, another benefit to playing Instant Fusion is um, Abyss Dweller. You already have a very good matchup because Denko Seca and Fusion are in your deck against Burning Abyss matchup. But Abyss Dweller is very good against that matchup as well. So you can end up playing Instant Fusion, getting out one of these, and then you can special summon any of you can special summon any of your old forts. You can summon that. You can summon one of your Chaos Dragons, and then overlay into an Abyss Dweller. And it's pretty much just G's from there because if you can in your field with this, a fusion, like a, this, a Winda, and a Denko Seca, you're not losing that game regardless of what happens because they cannot, they will not be able to get over everything at once. Um, and a lot of the times I have come up to the conclusion where that is like the most unbreakable board there is unless they have Regeki. And a lot of the times they don't even play Regeki. So having all that on the field at the same time, which I've done plenty of times, comes in handy. And then one more thing I wanted to talk about was the Armory Arm. Armory Arm is very good for a certain amount of reasons, all right? So let's get into the Mathematician play. A lot of the times you're going to have Mathematician and you are going to have Blackluster Soldier. Blackluster Soldier is the number one win condition in all of Yu-Gi-Oh right now, all right? So what you're going to do is you're going to summon the Blackluster Soldier, obviously, and you're going to normal summon the Mathematician. The mathematician is then going to send the Glow Bulb and special, then you're going to activate the Glow Bulb's effect to special summon itself. Go into Armory Arm. Armory Arm plus Black Luster Soldier is game half the time. And then everybody's asking, why do you play Honest? Well, BLS is a light. So you can, I've done this probably twice, where you go Armory Arm, BLS, and then have the Honest for game too. That's instant game right there. Like it's kind of, it's actually pretty funny. Being able to uh, BLS the big monster, have them take the damage, burn for it, and then just in case they are at the high, high enough fly points, you'll hit them for that much more on the next attack and just completely win. But um, that's that's it for my deck profile. Um, I do hope you guys enjoyed it. I just want to let you guys know this is completely teched out for this format right now. Um, I do appreciate a lot of the people that helped me test this deck. Um, the win ratio against Burning Abyss is actually like 90-10. Like, it's probably even more than that. Like, I rarely lose to Burning Abyss ever. And then in the mirror match, it helps a lot in the mirror match too. Because if you go Nat Beast in the mirror match, you're going to win the game more than likely as well. Because there's hardly, there's absolutely nothing other than... Um, like special summoning a whole bunch of stuff and then exotine in the field get over this again in the mirror match because if you can get this out in the mirror match you're going to win probably 90 percent of the time as well so um unless they have probably like the set dragon or the set um squamata which occasionally does happen but that's pretty much it guys i hope you it did enjoy the deck profile um i hope you enjoyed the text and this is how to beat cliff Forts, if you really want to know i've been hyping this up for a while kind of not really but I want everybody to know that don't give up on Shadals because there's a way around Cliff Forts. And I see a lot of people straying away from Shadals because of that. And I just want to let everybody know that there's a way to beat it. So that's pretty much it for me. So like this video if you enjoyed it. Um, comment what you think about it. If you have any more texts that you would like to play in Shadals and share with me, I would love to see all of the feedback from you guys. Um, Appreciate Super Games for letting letting this go on their you um, their website and whatnot. And until next time, guys, this is Spoofy with the Car Guys, and we'll see you later.